Hello, and here is Lesson 1, Creating a New Score, in our course on Sibelius 7. And under uh, Creating a New Score, these are all the different settings that we're going to have to look at uh, when we open up or when we start to create a new score in Sibelius. We have Portrait or Landscape Settings. That is, how is the page going to look? Uh, is it, if you had an 8.5 by a 11 piece of paper, are you holding it widthwise or lengthwise? Uh, portrait would be the way that you would usually look at a piece of paper, or as landscape would be uh, a long ways. House style formatting, uh, that includes uh, textiles that we're going to be using. Time signature uh, for the piece, are we going to start in 3 4, 4 4, 6 8? Pick up beats, if you have any notes uh, or any beats that will start before the downbeat. Tempo settings, how fast or slow is your song going to go? Key signature, uh, what, uh, what is the key signature of the piece, or if it has multiple key signatures, what is our starting key signature? And uh, setting up some text as the title, composer, uh, copyright information, and uh, other information that might be available uh, to us as well. So let's switch into Sibelius 7, and as you can see here, we're actually using Sibelius 7.5 for this demonstration. So when you open up Sibelius, this will be the page that you see here. Okay, under New Score, and typically we're going to start with a blank score. So we click on blank, and here is our uh, blank document setup. Okay, so it, first of all, it asks you for the letter size or the page size. Typically, we're going to go with letter. Uh, that's the eight and a half by eleven piece of paper that everybody is familiar with. Uh, portrait, as I said, would be the typical way that you look at a, a piece of eight and a half by eleven piece of paper. Or landscape would be lengthwise. Okay, in this case, we're going to go with portrait. House style, we have different text that we can select, uh, or different text styles basically, uh, jazz ink pen, uh, keyboard, opus, and uh, these will be reflected on our, uh, our preview window over here as we add different styles, or as we add different, uh, different things to it. So let's leave it as unchanged for now. Change instruments. Here's where we're going to select our instruments, and maybe to get started, Let's select a piano, and then we click on Add to Score. And notice both piano A and B comes up in the score. That would be your right hand and left hand. So that is already taken care of for you. You don't have to add them separately. And let's uh, look at strings here. Maybe we'll throw a violin in there. And if you notice, in this case, it added a, added a violin below the piano. If you want to move it up, uh, which typically I keep the piano uh, at the lowest point uh, of the score. So I'm going to click on violin 1 and click move up and then it automatically jumps up to the top of the score above both uh, piano staves. And let's see, maybe I have, uh, let's throw a flute in here. And maybe some, oh let's see, where's the trumpet, B flat trumpet. and some timpani. Now for timpani you have a choice of either no key or with key. Uh, I always choose timpani with key rather than using accidentals that the uh, the musician would have to look through the score uh, to know what was coming up as opposed to with the key signature. Uh, I think it just makes more sense to uh, put your key signatures at the beginning. So we're going to add uh, to the score and if you notice now we have flute, trumpet, timpani and violin got stuck down. Now in a traditional score perhaps you know, it will set up things the way that uh, it is commonly set up. Uh, however for my own taste uh, I don't usually like that. I like to keep my uh, my violin uh, up here more towards the flute. Uh, flute, violin, trumpet, timpani, and then piano down below that. Okay, so we're gonna go with those as our instruments and we click OK. And you will notice in our preview window over here that now we have a preview of a couple measures uh, of our, our score. Notice the timpani is the only one that has a, a bracket set on it, 
and I'll show you how to uh, get rid of that later when we get into the score itself. Let's take a look at our house style now. If we change it to Jazz Ink Pen, notice that the font styles and the graphic styles changed in your preview window. Keyboard Ink Pen. All right, again, slightly different. We got rid of the uh, the instrument names at the beginning. Maybe we'll go with Keyboard Opus Times. And again, you notice the change in the the style of the graphics. Uh, Leachy Ink Pen. Now we got our our instrument names back, and again, slightly different formatting. So you can play with this and decide what is your best. Uh, option for the people that you are going to be writing for. Uh, I originally used uh, jazz, uh, however some of the cantors uh, at my church when they were reading it uh, found it very difficult to read uh, the text uh, of the lyrics. Uh, so I eventually just got rid of that and uh, went back to simply using unchanged. This way it keeps everything in a very uh, typewritten almost kind of format. Uh, like a, a New York style font and it, it makes it much easier for uh, for my people to read. Okay, so moving down here, let's look at our time signature. And you notice that the options that you have here, 4-4 four, four is our most common. Cut time, 5-8, 12-8. If you want something that's a little more uh, difficult, a little uncommon, click on other and you will have an option here to change this to whatever you want. Uh, this comes in handy, for example, if you are working in chant notation and you're not going to actually put a time signature uh, on your music for your people to, to look at, but uh, you would need to input some sort of time signature for the computer to understand uh, how to play it. So, you know, you can set this up to uh, maybe 10-4, 10-8, you know, 1032, whatever you you wanted to do uh, for each measure, perhaps, you know, as you're, you're changing for your, your chant notation. Uh, we're going to keep this right now at just 4-4, four, four, and we click OK. All right, now if you notice, it adds 4-4, four, four, even though 4-4 four, four is already up here, it added another 4-4 four, four down here. So it doesn't matter. It's going to give you the same thing either way. If you have a pickup bar, okay, that would be in this case we have a quarter note so you would have one beat before the the pickup or one beat would be your pickup before the the downbeat uh, if you click on another note it adds it together so you actually have to highlight it and delete everything that's there and then change uh, to the next note now if I wanted to change this maybe I want to change this to a dotted half note don't just come up here and select it okay because now it's going to change things. So you have to actually delete the whole thing and then go in and add it like that. Okay, I'm going to go back to an eighth note. I highlight it and delete it and change it to an eighth note. Otherwise what ends up happening is you start adding them and we don't want to do that. That will just uh, confuse the matter. Okay, so now in this case uh, we'll leave that as a, an eighth note there, that's fine. Tempo markings, if you wanted to include a tempo marking, you could do that here. Uh, quarter note equals whatever your marking might be. And again, you can change this just as we did with our pickup bar up here. Same thing. Or if you did not want a metronome mark necessarily, if you wanted a tempo marking, you could do that right here as well. Okay, select Andante. And then Andante would show up at the top of your, your page. And maybe we'll leave Andante in there for now. And how about uh, key signatures? We have major sharp, major flat, minor sharp, minor flat, or no key signature. It's going to be in C major or A minor. Or maybe we're just going to do a, an open key. Uh, let's uh, choose D just for uh, to have a, a selection there so we can see what our sharps are going to look like when we put our score together. Okay, and now here is our score information. Title, okay, and you can fill this in as uh, as needed. 
uh, as you see fit. Copyright information, the copyright with the C in circle is out automatically already placed there, but if you do not add information after it, it will not show up on your score. So let's change that to copyright uh, 2014 by me and someone else. Okay. If you wanted to create a separate title page, you could simply check the checkbox and then you would have a separate title page uh, with the appropriate information on it. Uh, I don't usually do that because then that just simply creates a, another piece of paper that is waste. All right. So after that, we have all our information there. I click create. And it takes a couple of seconds and here is our new score. Okay, let me get our score set up here to take up the whole page. There we go. And there is our new score. And as you can see, we have our title at the top, composer, lyrics, our tempo marking, key signatures and time signatures. We had a startup, uh, a pickup beat of an eighth note, and so it starts with the, an eighth rest, and then we, we can change that to whatever note we want. And if we scroll down to the bottom, there's our time or our copyright notice. Now I have uh, a MacBook Pro, so if I wanted to scroll up and down, I simply use my gestures on the trackpad uh, to move up and down, or I can click with my uh, my trackpad mouse button, and you notice the cursor changes into a hand when I go to move it, and I can grab the page and slide it up or down, left or right as need be. And I mentioned to you about this bracket. The bracket is automatically put there. You can extend it if you wanted to, or in mo what I usually do is just highlight it and then press the delete button, and it goes away. So I don't really see any uh, purpose to, to bracketing one instrument like that. If you wanted to bracket multiple instruments, then just grab the tab there and pull it out as far as you want. Or maybe you even want to change it to different instruments. Okay, depending on what your your needs. Uh, in most cases, though, I'm just going to delete it and that's that. Okay, so we have our new song. What I would recommend is going up to File and pull down Save. And let's go to, let's just go to our documents here and Sibelius. And I'm going to call this my new song. And then save. And then your title pops up up here. And now you have created and saved your new score and you are ready to move on to lesson two and start uh, inputting things onto your score. So that is the end of lesson one and uh, we'll see you back here in lesson two. Thank you.